Hey everyone, Kash Investor back to another video for today. So we're starting the earnings day or night with Teladoc. I'm gonna go work my way through all the rest. Nvidia, Unity, Lemonade, so on and so forth. I just don't understand why they all have to report earnings on the same day. But anyways, let's talk about Teladoc. They missed on earnings per share, beat a little bit on revenue, Outlook missed as well. Stock is down around 9% right now. Again, not a great quarter. Yes, margins on an adjusted basis are getting better, which is fine. But overall, I mean, where's the growth? Where's the continued execution? And then, yes, we still have another goodwill one-time impairment chart in this quarter. Hopefully, it's the last one, but hey, with Teladoc, you never know. So let's jump into the earnings report. Before we do so, if you want to support this channel, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. And if you enjoy these type of videos, leave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not. I would really, really appreciate that. So let me first talk about the net loss per share of, well, negative $23.49. This includes goodwill impairment charge of $23.21 per share. Stock-based compensation expense of 31 cents and amortization of intangibles of 30 cents per share. Okay, we've seen this a couple of times throughout 2022, no surprises there. Now, when it comes to revenue, this quarter reached $638 million. On adjusted EBITDA basis, we reached $94.1 million. Yes, year over year, there is growth, but how much growth is left or Compared to their expectations, did it meet it? In my eyes, no, it did not. Now, when it comes to the segments, this is a new thing. So they're now reporting integrated care segment revenue and also better help segment revenue. Because as you can clearly see right here, better help segment adjusted EBITDA. So a huge, huge increase quarter over quarter. And now we're up again year over year. Of course, with better help, as we've talked about this in the last quarter, this has been doing quite well this is the bright star the bright light of the business so it makes sense to separate both businesses now as you can clearly see integrated care segment revenue has been growing year over year quarter over quarter as well a lot no not that much same thing can be said for the adjusted EBITDA then for better help segment revenue yes it has grown year over year quarter over quarter it went from 265 to 277 million dollars so Okay, fine. And I mean, with a business like Teladoc, you cannot tell me that it's cyclical or whatever. People are getting sick no matter what the economic situation is. So, yeah, I mean, there's really no excuses there when it comes to the current macroeconomic environment. Yes, maybe clients might not on board, but still, the overall business should be running at, let's say, full capacity or near full capacity always, all the time. Then when it comes to US revenue compared to international revenue, of course, the majority of the revenue comes from the United States. We've seen growth in both markets here, year over year. Then when it comes to the key operating metrics with regards to integrated care members, it has grown year over year, grown a little bit quarter over quarter as well. Better help paying customers are still increasing. Average revenue per US integrated care member has not grown year over year and has barely grown quarter over quarter. It is now at $1.44. When it comes to chronic care program enrollment, yes, it has grown year over year, but as you can see, Q2, Q3, Q4, on average, it's a bit flat-ish. And then this to me is what makes this report not as bad as it seems. And that's well adjusted gross margin and adjusted EBITDA and adjusted EBITDA margin. So it's nice to see that since Q1, we have seen gross margin and adjusted gross margin go up. We went from 66.9% to 70.4% on the adjusted gross margin percentage. And then on the gap gross margin percentage went from 66% to 68.6%. So fine, this is positive. On the other side, we have here obviously the horrible three quarters in a row, although Q2 seemed to be the bottom right now. We can see a huge, huge improvement Q3, Q4. We went from adjusted EBITDA margin of 8.4% to now 14.8%, which is also grown year over year, so that's great. And adjusted EBITDA went from 77.1% to 94.1% 
million dollars, which we've seen before. And now as for the balance sheet, so they still have enough cash, $911 million. They have $1.54 billion of convertible and long-term debt on balance sheet. Operating cash flow for full year was $189 million. So, okay, I mean, they're not going out of business anytime soon. And now the reason I think the market is reacting harshly right now is because of the outlook for Q1 and for the full year 2023. So for Q1, they expect revenue to grow between 8 and 11% year over year. Net loss per share to be between 55 and 45 cents, negative, so a loss. Adjusted EBITDA in the millions, so a decrease here, 23 to 8% year over year. US integrated care members, an increase of 6 to 7%, so not great. For the full year, they expect revenue to grow between 6 and 11%, net loss per share to be still significant, 1.75 to $1.25, adjusted EBITDA to grow 12 to 32%. If we can see it grow 32%, I'd be very, very surprised, but hey, let's wait and see. And then US integrated care members to grow 1% to 3%. So overall, I mean, the market right now is not really willing to give average earnings or close to bad earnings a pass. All right. We've seen much better reports of the last couple of weeks. This one was just not good enough, not good enough for the current market, especially not good enough from what we've heard the well management talk about their business in the last earnings call. It's really like one bad quarter. Well, last year was a couple of bad quarters, then suddenly one better quarter. Management seemed excited, seems to have, well, things figured out. And then suddenly we get something like this with this outlook. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Now, last thing, when it comes to stock-based compensation, we can see that it has been decreasing each and every quarter. And that's, let's say, a positive thing. And now last thing, a word from the CEO. So we are pleased with the strong fourth quarter and full year operating results. Despite a challenging macro environment, we were able to expand our product offering and enhance the level of care delivered across our integrated whole person platform. He added, as we look ahead to 2023, we see a healthy demand for solutions that promise better access and outcomes while lowering the cost of healthcare. Our key strategic priorities remain our whole person suite of services, including our virtual primary care offering, Primary 360, our suite of chronic care management solutions, mental health, and continued growth in better help consumer brands. We remain committed to a balanced approach to growth and margin, which will allow us to invest in key initiatives across our product roadmap. Again, they are great with words, but where's the execution? I mean, again, they have, we've talked about this before, the products, the product portfolio that they have, the offerings that they have, it's great, right? It's the best in class in their segment. So how come they're not able to produce the goods? I just don't understand this. And maybe that's one of the biggest reasons why I went well and sold my position a couple of months ago. I mean, you can have a great company, but if management is not on the level of the product that they're offering, sadly, it's going to fail unless somebody buys them out or management suddenly miraculously changes course. I don't know, that's just my thoughts, of course, do share your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.